Okay, so this is Jeff Gibbon with University of Volvo, and I'm going to go through the basic operating systems on your new Volvo. I'm using an XC90 uh, T6 currently just to show um, everybody this, so uh, just kind of bear with me. Some of these features won't be on the car that you're actually getting, and some will be, and some other things will, will be on your car that aren't on this one, but I'm going to basically just highlight and touch the the main features here just so you'll be able to operate it and kind of learn and explore on your own as well give you enough information uh, to do that so over here you've got your window switches front and rear and then the mirror switches left and right and then you just select them and just move them with this joystick right here just like so and of course your door locks are right here setting memory positions right here you press the button memory button and then the number you'll get a little chime to let you know that the memory is then set and then moving over to the left stalk control right here your vehicle should be an automatic for the headlights right there and then if you just want to uh, rotate that forward you're going to have the auto high beam function that's going to come on at nighttime and then you'll get an indicator right here when that's on that little a with the headlight, it lets you know your auto high beams are activated and ready to use. And they'll dim and brighten with uh, ambient lighting, oncoming traffic, things like that. And just to turn it off, you just rotate it back forward again. Just like that. Moving inside the car, right here on your steering wheel, we're going to talk about, let me get buckled up here first, so this will activate, but we're going to talk about your adaptive cruise control functions and pilot assist, and that's going to be on the left-hand side of the steering wheel over on this side. And then right here, the center button, is where you turn on your adaptive cruise control, and then if you want to use your pilot assist function on that, all you do is just go ahead and click, once this is on, you click the arrow to the right, and then that's going to engage pilot assist. You'll see that indicator there. Oh. Adaptive cruise control and then pilot assist. The only difference between these two is when you're on pilot assist, it's actually going to steer the car up to 80 miles an hour. You do have to have your hands on the wheel, but it will keep steering on the vehicle. Uh, as long as it has clearly defined lane markers where the cameras can see it. Um, if you don't want to drive with a pilot assist on, you just simply click it back over uh, to the adaptive cruise control, which is the arrow to the left right here. So adaptive cruise, pilot, ass pilot assist right here. Pilot assist, adaptive cruise. And then these functions right here are just to adjust the following distance to the car ahead of you. You can go closer or you can go further back from the car ahead of you based on following distance. That's what that is. So. It's going to require just to use it, get used to it a little bit, but at least you know the functionality and how to use that. And then to increase your speed is the plus, to decrease is the minus, just like that. And then moving over here to the right side, you've got your volume control for your radio or stereo, whatever you're playing. And then you can advance your tracks over here, depending on what you've got on. Um, it'll advance your stations for your presets. Um, or it'll change your Sirius satellite radio stations as well, up and down, just by clicking left and right. And then it'll also, if you're plugged in with Apple CarPlay, uh, you can advance songs right here as well, just by doing that. Uh, voice activation is right here. Important thing with voice activation is when you press the button, just press it, wait for the tone. Then you can say something like raise temperature. Please repeat. Raise temperature. Temperature set to 76 degrees. Okay, so important thing is to wait for that tone, then talk, and then before you do it again, make sure you wait for the tone again. Navigation. Navigation. What do you want to do? Change state. Which state? North Carolina. Changing search area to North Carolina. Okay, everybody got that? This one right here is your trip computer, which won't display in this car because it's not running. But basically, if you pull that up, it'll pull up another menu right here. Just pulls it up about a third of the way. 
and it gives you like average fuel economy, average speed, um, total miles, instantaneous fuel economy, all that stuff. So it's all right there. It's going to require just a little bit of, uh, uh, again, playing around with it, exploring on your own in this environment. So it's always fun to learn. Uh, it's the best way to learn sometimes is on your own. Adjustable steering column, tilts and telescopes in and out. And there's it's a, a mechanical lever on the bottom of the wheel down here. And you just put that back up. And then on the center, the center uh, screen control, I want to tell you a little bit about that because this right here is your home button, or I'm sorry, this is your home screen essentially, which is uh, what you're always going to see when the car starts and gets ready to go. And then if you want to swipe it over to the right, then you're going to see all your driver aids lo lo located right here. So you can deselect those or you can actually move those around by pressing and holding. So you can drag and drop them. And then back over here, you've got all your media up top with your AM, FM, Sirius satellite radio, Bluetooth connectivity. And then in the center area here on the way this car is configured, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and then these other systems or displays right here, which will display in this bottom fourth tile right down here. So if I want to select, say, car status. So now that's my fourth tile now. See what I mean? So those will come in there. Sound experience, because this car does have Harman Kardon. I can select that and put that on my fourth tile as well. So if I want to adjust easily, I just click it, and then I can get to my you know, different treble, woofer controls, equalizer, all that. You notice we don't have a phone paired here if we wanted to pair our phone. We would just start the Bluetooth on our on our device and then hit add phone right there and then just follow the instructions. It'll tell you what to do. So it's searching for Bluetooth devices now. I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to take that off. Uh, this is our stereo, well, our radio. Basically, we've got our stations listed here. And if I want to have Sirius Satellite Radio, my channels will be listed there. So it's not going to pick up because I'm inside the showroom. So I'll hit FM, take it back there. Go ahead and minimize that. I'll go to my navigation screen. Change that so you can see it. And then I'll increase my screen size. And when I increase my screen size with the arrow in the bottom corner, I can then pinch to zoom out or zoom in wherever I want to go. Just like so. And then if I want to minimize that, just go ahead and hit that arrow again brings me back and then I can minimize the whole system just like that for our settings controls you'll see these two bars up here just kind of select those and then you can select the settings and then you go into different settings on the car I'll just show you a few my car you can go through here and set up different individual settings for those items locking mirrors convenience uh, your telesafe individual drive mode we'll turn that on um, then we can select the different drive mode if we want to from our wheel down here, which I'll show you in a minute uh, I'll hit back on that. I don't want to get too in-depth in this because I, I can get I can get lost um, With you very quickly on this stuff, but I encourage you just to explore these options and You know select you can't break anything and if you ever get lost in the settings Anywhere in any of these menus you can always just hit this whole this hard uh, home button right here And that just brings you right back here Okay. Uh, temperature controls. If I want to adjust those, I just select it and then pull it up and down however I want to do it. Just like so. That's really about it for that. There's a lot more that it does, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I just want you to be able to be familiar with it and kind of get around that. When you look down here, you'll see these buttons. Uh, there's only about eight buttons in the entire car. Everything else is controlled uh, from this panel up here. So we've got our rear defroster i'm sorry front defroster rear defroster this is just another double for our uh, volume controls advancing our tracks or our stations and then our pause button for the radio is here over here on xc90 you're going to have this drop down which is going to drop the glove box on all the other product that we have that is just a blank your glove box is actually a mechanical handle which you'll figure that out pretty pretty easily uh, the center console on all the all the vehicles is the same except for the XE40. Uh, your start stop is going to be right here. You just put your foot on the brake and then turn this to the right to start it. And then to turn it off, you turn it back to the right. 
And then the drive modes, this is the button I told you about where we added our individual drive mode. See that there? We turned that on, so now we have an individual settings that we can select back in that settings menu and set the individual drive mode up to our personal liking. The other settings, eco, comfort, dynamic, and off-road are preset from the factory, so we can't change anything with those. And then keep in mind, comfort is always the default drive mode. So if you like to drive in eco a lot, you'll have to turn that on every time you start the car uh, because it will default back to comfort. And that's because that's the best settings for overall performance of the car, whether it be horsepower, uh, your aircon your air unit, um, anything that has to do with the efficiency of the car um, is going to be in the comfort mode. Eco is, is spe specifically suited for getting the most fuel economy out of the car you can. So it will sacrifice other functions in the car like power, horsepower, acceleration, um, your, AC, your AC as well will also be cut down into an eco mode on that. Dynamic is uh, where you're going to get the most performance out of the car. It doesn't really care about fuel economy there. It's just going to use, use all the available horsepower and torque that the car can produce at any given time under acceleration. And then off-road only works below speeds of 25 miles an hour. And then um, that basically is uh, once you exceed that speed, it's going to automatically flip back to comfort once you go over 25 miles an hour. So... Um, that's pretty much it for this to kind of get you started and then down over here uh, your parking brake is here and then this is the auto hold button the auto hold I personally like a lot myself because that basically is when you get to a stoplight after you've brought the car to a complete stop uh, you can take your foot off the brake if that is illuminated and on and you'll know if it's not because the car will move if it's on the car will stay stationary until you actually tap the accelerator and then it will start moving again um, I like it because it's less fatiguing in that way. You can just, you know, essentially uh, come to a stop, take your foot off the brake, relax, touch the gas when you're ready to go, and off you go. That's pretty much all I have for you. Um, again, like I said, there's a lot more to a car that it will do, but for the purposes of this, I wanted to keep it about, uh, about 12 to 13 minutes um, in the hopes that I would keep your attention and not give you too much information and uh, lose you. Uh, a couple other things real quick because I just saw it. Uh, this is your eight, your um, windshield wiper controls are right here. Uh, this is your auto windshield wiper or rain sensor I should say. When that's on you'll get a little, um, it won't be a, min uh, a warning like I've got here. I've got the warning because this car's in show mode. But basically when you, if you turn that on right there, it's just a little button, you'll feel it. And then that will give you um, your rain sensor will be on so if it starts to rain it's going to automatically start wiping and then you can adjust the intensity of that by this wheel right here or the sensitivity i should say so all right keep that in mind and then the other thing i want to show you is inside the center console right here if you can see those usb ports right there there's two of them one has a white uh, band around it. The white band around it is for plugging in with your Apple CarPlay. So be sure you use that one if you're going to plug in with Apple CarPlay. I believe that's also for Android Auto. I don't have an Android device, so I've never actually plugged one in. But plug in there, plug it into your phone. Once you do that, this Apple CarPlay will illuminate in green more so than it is now. It'll actually be a bright green. And then you can select that and be able to use Apple CarPlay. Uh, I'll probably do another video where I'm displaying your Apple CarPlay functions on it for you so you can see everything that will do in the hopes that you will use that function uh, and that feature more so than not because it really is pretty fantastic. That's all I've got for you. I hope you enjoy the car and please let us know if you have any questions.